Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and this is a market update for Tuesday, October 30th, 2018. We'll keep this one relatively quick. Um, I wanted to make mention uh, that uh, on the site last night on rightsideofthechart.com, after the markets closed, I spent hours and hours pouring through the charts, and I posted on the front page, uh, as members probably got the email, um, that uh, I think it's time to start reducing short exposure, that the risk reward is quickly shifting. Uh, it, it's not very favorable uh, at this point. The, the RR risk reward ratio is, is starting to diminish on the short side. Now what that means, that's not a, you know, that's, that's far from a screaming buy signal. It's just saying, uh, like I said, when the market, you know, in the last few months, when we had these negative divergences and the, the technicals were clearly bearish, even though the trend was still up, that the risk reward is not favorable. Uh, so the same reasons, you know, I wasn't chasing QQQ back in September um, because the upside appeared minimal compared to the downside risk. Now, that's the same thing with the stock market. Let me be very clear. That doesn't negate or... Uh, you know, uh, you know, erase that uh, the potential for a big sharp meltdown. Um, you know, I talked about the pension funds and hedge funds and and how the risk models are being broken uh, with this sell off because Treasury bonds are not rallying or any type of really any any bonds at all, corporates, uh, junk bonds. So they're missing that that part of the, the their cylinders not firing. So there's still the possibility, plus all the margin unwinding, that we can get a big flush down. But it's about risk to reward. Um, you know, the old saying in Wall Street is bulls make money, bears make money, and pigs get slaughtered. So to me, it's just a matter of do you want to, you know, st uh, you know, continue to stay short or especially to add new shorts. You know, if you are short, and I made that clear on the site, we closed out. After um, uh, the semiconductors and QQQ hit our pro price targets yesterday, or at least uh, their first price targets, uh, I went ahead and closed those trades out today. But I did make mention, if you want to, uh, you can very well put a trailing stop if you're short uh, anything, really, uh, including the broad markets. Put it not too far above today's highs. I'm going to go over some, some pretty key levels. Uh, and, and some, you know, significant development, particularly in Apple today. So Apple can continue to give some headwinds to this market. And it could also be the catalyst for another leg down because, uh, again, just because the risk reward to shorting or staying short is not very favorable, there's not a lot of evidence of a bottom in the chart here other than being very oversold. We have some divergences on the RSI, like I mentioned. This is a QQQ daily. But remember, divergences are not a buy or sell signal. We've had divergences for months, even you know, almost a year. And some can, depending on where you look at, you know, on the weekly charts. But uh, and then, you know, each one does usually result in a, in a uh, counter trend rally or, or correction. But uh, we don't have the divergence on the PPO yet on the daily time frame. And so there's still very much the possibility that this market can go down another maybe even 10% or more from where we're at right now. Um, it just depends, again, on your trading style. So if you want to continue to trail down stops, see, we'll see what happens today. Um, there's certainly some downside there. And, um, and for members of the site, by the way, you know, I talked about and I have put out some videos recently on some long setups. I'm not adding um, many official long trade ideas right now because of this. The Just because the risk reward is starting to diminish on the short side doesn't mean, you know, markets are not black and white. doesn't mean that uh, we now have a excellent risk reward on the long side. We don't have any buy signals yet. Uh, so I'd rather be, in this case, um, you know, as far as getting aggressively long, I'd rather be the second mouse as the second mouse gets to cheese. Uh, I think most of you understand what that uh, expression means. So there's QQQ again. We hit that, uh, my, you know, my first price target on the swing trade yesterday. And that's where we reversed so far. Uh, so we closed that one out today. Here's SPY. Uh, and also, again, fell almost to resist support. And I have a, you know, th these are sloppy big price swings, but I have a support level there, give or take around uh, 259, 260. And we came very close there. Again, nothing really uh, in the way of uh, any kind of concrete buy signals, at least on the daily time frame. But uh, uh, again, um, you don't always have to have a clear you know, black and white or green light buy signal 
Uh, it's more about the markets being very oversold and, um, you know, we could get some sharp bounces here. So I would rather, this is me personally, and I, I closed out into this morning, the shorts I didn't close out yesterday. I went through even my long-term accounts and put stop loss orders. I haven't even checked those yet. They probably were taken out, you know, this morning market opened 2% stop loss orders on just about everything. Uh, so that could mean, you know, I can, they could continue to trail down. And those are, by the way, trailing stops. If the market craters today at the end of the day, uh, those stop loss orders will trail down or you can put hard stops in them and then participate and, and get those, you know, additional gains, especially if we get a meltdown type sell off before we have a, you know, a lasting bottom, uh, which would set us up for a multi week swing trade. So those are my thoughts. And uh, let me show you a few other things. Here's here's one of my biggest concerns right now. And I think one of the biggest hindrances to a rally is yesterday. And I made mention I've been watching it was at first 216.41 uh, was the line there. You can see a very well-defined support level. There were a couple things on Apple, by the way. This is the Apple daily chart. We had uh, this, this uptrend line here, which was broken. But then, as I mentioned, when that broke, we had a little wedge there at the time but what i said is well you have you have pretty decent support below so you don't short at that break because you have support just below and we we danced on that support call it from about 215 up to about 216 and change and then we had this alternative trend line that came into play here and that was also holding things up so yesterday we had the first breakdown and i also mentioned on the site uh, within the trading room uh, that we had really this 212.75 level was the one uh, that I mentioned just the other day that we really needed to see that go because that's what had capped the recent pullback. So then you can see a breakdown. Um, these are actually targets from all the way back here. We had this wedge breakdown. First target was hit right, right there. Uh, we had another bounce, put another divergent high. So you can see also here, we just hit my third target from back there. This was just a, a counter trend bounce, uh, second divergent high. And so there's there's a case for a, a bounce in Apple um, on that's on a 60 minute chart. But then I look at the daily chart and we had this big breakdown yesterday. That's pretty impulsive. It's broken down. So now Apple and I've watched this all day. It's back testing that 215 ish level. Um, it needs to get back above there. Apple's going to report on Thursday. So whatever Apple does now, I, I, I've said this many times in the past. I don't take breakdowns that occur right in front of earnings, especially on a stock that's prone to having big swings before and after earnings, because there's a good chance, although this breakdown could certainly stick, it all depends on what happens after on Friday after they report Thursday night. Um, this could certainly play out and head down to some of these targets down here, or it could prove to be a whipsaw signal. Um, but Apple is the largest component of QQQ, the largest component of SPY. Um, so it, it, it will likely have an impact on the market. And right now it's in a bearish technical position posture here. And um, it may continue to, the week could hold up like this. We could just flounder around for the rest of the week um, with the market waiting to see what Apple does or not. Here's the thing, Apple it has, uh, although it, it, it is a big driver of the markets, there have been periods like back here in 2015 when it broke down or uh, even 2012, I uh, forget which one it was, I have to overlay, where Apple actually corrected, had its own little bear market, and the U.S. stock market went up or at least held up during that period of time. So it is possible that Apple does its own thing, and the rest of these stocks, because uh, the rest of the FANG stocks, uh, let's see, Facebook, Amazon, uh, Microsoft, and Alphabet, um, they've already had the snot knocked out of them. Apple was pretty much our last holdout. You can see just looking at the cues, Apple, uh, compared to all the other FANG stocks, has, has held up. Microsoft has done a pretty decent job of holding up, but the ones that really took it on the chin were Amazon, and that was a big one. Uh, Alphabet's had a big sharp correction, but all down here to these key support zones. And this is what, we, you know, going through the charts last night, and I could sit here and talk to you for two hours, some of the things I looked at, individual sectors, uh, some other indicators, a lot of stuff. But uh, most importantly, a lot of stocks quite oversold at support. And uh, so that kind of goes into my my thought process here. So, uh, again, um, you know, there's when I look at these weekly charts, all of these stocks, all of them tell me they're going a lot lower. This is a breakdown of a long term support line. I'm just happen to flip over to Alphabet. Um, these are class A shares. Uh, you know, at best, I see a bounce back and a shorting up if we bounce back to this long term uptrend line in that 40 week moving average. 
so there's more downside intermediate term. But I'm an active trader. If we get a counter trend bounce here, uh, I can see the possibility of a, a bounce as much as uh, seven percent or so from where we, you know, where we hit the lows yesterday. Um, I'll try to, you know, identify some uh, bounce targets for those wanting to trade on the long side or those looking to short a bounce. I'll do that, and that's what I do on the site and throughout the trading room. In fact, all day today we've been focusing on intraday charts. But uh, before we wrap this video up, let me just go to. Uh, what does stand out to me, and I think I pointed these out in yesterday's video, here are those 60-minute falling wedge patterns that I've been highlighting for a while. We've had divergence, and as I said, those divergences I thought would continue to extend, and they have. Uh, yesterday, we had a nice uh, hammer right here on SPY. So there's a hammer, reversal candlestick. So far, uh, we've had confirmation. When you have a potential topping candlestick or bottoming candlestick in this case a bottoming stick this hammer um, it only does good at least in my opinion if you have a follow-through confirmation stick so in other words if we printed some type of candle like a doji up here at the top you want to see a red follow-through candle the next day there was a doji printed at resistance at the downtrend line followed by a red candle and you had a big drop there in the spy that was you know from that point about you know, three three and a half percent uh, so, so far you have these candles here and that's bullish right now, but there's still a lot of work to be done. Uh, like I said, Apple is now uh, that, that support once broken that I just showed you on Apple, call it anywhere to be safe. It really needs to jump back above 216. But then again, my caveat, anything that it does between now and Friday morning can be erased depending how earnings go on Thursday night. So take whatever Apple does with a giant lump of salt um until earnings are out of the way and the market can digest whatever they whatever they say uh so here's spy really pushing here you can see this is today boom 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 spy needs to take out 266.79 and then the golden downtrend line above if it does you know there's potential for a, a pop you know um, I could easily see a pop up here and that's about a three and a half, three and a quarter percent pop from where we're at right now up to about that 274.50 ish level, um, possibly more. These are just rough targets now. Any bounce, if it does materialize, that's assuming that it does, we'll have to just assess it as it goes. Um, here's QQQ, lots of levels here. 165.59 is like a brick wall today. There's some comparable levels I'm watching on NQ. Been trading that as a few others have in the trading room today. But you can see this so far, yeah, about 165.60 uh, is a brick wall. It was, you know, support back here, support briefly broken, but still support there. And now that's resistance. So the uh, Qs need to pop above that, and it would greatly assist. QQQ if, if uh, Apple can cooperate and get back above 216 or so. If it does, uh, and again, it doesn't have to, you can see everything else rally and Apple kind of suck wind until earnings. Uh, but uh, you can see all those micro levels on there. And then the golden trend line still quite a bit overhead. Uh, there it is, about 3% just to get up to the test that again. But uh, you know, here's the thing. Uh, it, so far, I call it the golden trend line because it's provided so many golden shorting opportunities uh, on every kiss back to that uh, now all month, really. Um, we haven't touched it in a while, so we come back up to it. Probably almost certainly get a reaction there, especially if it comes in around that 170 level, maybe a little pop below. Expect some volatile trading through there if it gets there. Um, but again, first things first, here's your levels. Take it one at a time. Pop above there. We've had a lot of reactions today. So I think we'll have a sharp sell off. Uh, I'm sorry, a sharp rally intraday if we can pop that 165, 80-ish here is where that level's at. That could give us a uh, nice pop today and um, into the close or you know I could say resistance is resistance and tone less taken out or we fail there we've had a lot of tests so far just like Apple's been trying to back test that level the, that it gave up yesterday and so far has not been successful um, tap 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 eventually the bulls give up and the bears become emboldened and then you get another move down so there it is um, trade as you want just know this and if you've been trading you already know this volatility is high don't you know you the, these three even four percent intraday swings now are the norm sooner or later that will abate but it has not yet so just be careful with uh 
with your position sizing. Don't get married to any one scenario and just trade objectively. You know, if you're, you know, you don't have a position right now and you're looking to swing trade, um, you're, let's say you became bullish on QQQ or SPY since yesterday. Does it make sense to go long here? No, no, it's 164.31. The resistance level is only a point, you know, point and a half above or no point, just over a point above. And that's on a $165 share price. So you're talking what less than half a percent or a little over half a percent. Um, why not just wait for the breakout and then you have a higher probability entry or if you want to continue to short the rips there it is there's your there's your level and uh hey if we pop it no big deal because you put your stop a little bit above give it a little room the market's the volatility's high so they're going to run stops whether it's the market makers playing games as some people like to say or it's just the fact that you have these high frequency trading rips and dips you know when the buyers jump in goes one way and you may overshoot a resistance level so give a little bit of buffer make up you know you have to account for this elevated volatility meaning you you'll you're more than likely slice uh, a little bit below and above support and resistance levels even if they ultimately hold uh, so that's uh, those are the levels to watch on qqq and spy and uh and apple as well and uh we'll we'll, we'll see where we go from here so far as i'm you know, doing the video, you're seeing QQQ starting to move down once again after an, yet another failure there. Um, but we're still positive today. And one more thing I wanted to mention, all day I've been watching the S&P 500. There are 11 sectors that make up the S&P 500. All of those sectors at this point in time, except utilities, are green. Utilities were green earlier. That's XLU. And I've watched XLK go back and forth. So it's really, you know, first of all, utilities have very little bearing, a uh, very low weight. Uh, as far as the S&P 500 goes. So it doesn't really matter what the utilities do because their weighting in the S&P isn't heavy enough to, to, to move it. So let's forget about XLU being red. Everything else is green. REITs are up 2%, XLP, consumer staples, energy is even rallying today finally. Uh, there's a lot of, lot of green on the uh, S&P 500, but it's tech. And it's of tech, it's Apple and Amazon mostly that are continuing to drag this down. Intel's looking better lately, um, but uh, it's Apple right now. And uh, that, that could continue into uh, earnings, you know, until that's out of the way Friday or possibly even beyond. Again, it's that unwinding of the overcrowded fan trade I've been talking about for a very long time. And it's finally upon us. And these, you know, these institutions as well as individual people, it's overcrowded means everybody's in it. And uh, they, they realize that that cuts both ways. When there's a rush for the exits, you have too many people that want out of the same stocks at the same time, selling overwhelms buyers. And uh, that's when stocks go down. It's, it's simple supply and demand. So we'll, we'll see. Maybe that selling is almost over, at least for the near term. Please don't confuse my near term and long term analysis because uh, the, uh, the long term still uh, intermediate to longer term charts still look bearish at this time. All right, this has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. Hope you enjoyed it.